What's going on? Welcome to another edition of Hustlers Kung Fu Live. We're going to go into the deep water today. We're going to talk about how to be successful in life and business with evergreen principles. We're going to get into that in a whole lot more. So I want to make sure that we are on point. This live. Talk about a few things. Let me get a few things off my chest. The first thing I want to address is to my feminine men haters. If you're going to come to the channel and leave a comment, you should do your research. I've been fully transparent about my failures and it, this, this whole notion. Uh, and this is going to match up with a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about because, you know, I made a comment about me, Kevin, and I made a comment about Gary V and a feminine man got all up in his feelings, but this is something that I want you guys to understand this. Me, Kevin has made 12 or 14 videos about Grant Cardone and this feminine man sees no problem with that. None whatsoever. And part of this is feminine men and many people absolutely hate extremely successful people because it makes them feel small. It makes them feel unaccomplished. It makes them feel like they're wasting their lives. It makes them feel petty. And me, Kevin, who's been, you know, this is documented. I'm not making this up. He's been going after Grant Cardone for the longest because this is how he's built his YouTube channel off of Grant's clout going after Grant. And this is a common tactic that many people do. Meet Kevin is a very feminine man, and Meet Kevin is a full-time YouTuber. He's making two to three videos a day. He's a full-time YouTuber. I seriously doubt he does real estate anymore because he's too busy doing YouTube to pay for his rental properties that have no renters in them. Th this, is, this is facts. This is, you know, because this is one of the things about feminine men. Feminine men love attention. They're very much like women. They love attention. They'll take attention any way they can get it. And a big part of this for you feminine men who come to my channel and talk smack and leave a comment and then tell me to leave the comment. <laughs> here's, here's why y'all do that. Because you're looking for attention. You're hoping another feminine man will come in so y'all can start this little feminine man conversation and go back and forth. And fortunately for me, I don't really get that many comments by y'all because here's the thing. And this is going to be very pivotal and elementary in how to be successful in life and business. Many of you feminine men refuse to take your shot. Going on to the comment about Gary V. I've said this for years that Gary V doesn't want your money. He doesn't want my money. He doesn't want your money. He wants the money of the fortune 2000. So he uses us as leverage. Look what I've did for my personal brand. See, I've done all of this and this is why you're going to cut me a two to three to four million dollar check per month. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to do the social media stuff. He doesn't want to do this. The money ain't good enough. So when you can make, 
200 300 million a year or you can make maybe four million a year it, it, it's not a big brainer gary's playing a whole different game gary's a really smart operator but i feel that this whole notion of just creating content putting yourself out there on the internet there, there's just like uh, i was watching he was advising this one guy who has a youtube channel he would go to a thrift store he would buy a used camera, a film camera, in a digital age, a film camera, and he would take pictures. Because this is one of the things to notice about Gary's a super nice guy. Gary will not tell you that your business ideal sucks. He will not tell you that. He will not bring it up. He'll just like, well, do it this way. And we'll have you thought about it this way. He will sit there and go through this with you because Gary knows his base. Gary knows he has a lot of young, impressionable people that listen to him as gospel and he is not going to disappoint you. He's not going to tell you your business concept sucks. He's not going to tell you that because that is against his brand. And Gary is going to stay on brand. And this whole notion like Gary never asked for any money. He don't want your money. He doesn't want your money, but you, and here's something else too. And this is going to be very pivotal in because like right now I'm paying 15 grand a year for a YouTube mastery group. There's going to be a point in your business where the free information will not be enough. And if you've been walking around listening to Gary V for five or six years, you never bought a course and he's like, I'm here for this free information from Gary. Your business is going to stall. You're never going to get to where you need to be. It's just facts. It's just ne just facts. You're never going to get to where you need to be. Because, like I said, I like Gary. I admire Gary. He's been, he's built a phenomenal business. But I understand the game that Gary's playing, that many of the people who follow Gary have no clue. Just like this thing with me, Kevin. Kevin is going after Grant to build his brand. Grant is way more successful than me, Kevin. But all of these little psychophants are like, well, I can't see that because I don't want to see that because, you know, yeah, Grant, 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 Grant flexing too much. Grant, Grant got a Rolls. Grant got a plane. I, I don't like Grant, so I don't really care if Meet Kevin uses Grant's name to build his channel off his clout. You can't even see that, which if you were being objective, you'd be like, there's something wrong with that. But since you are a feminine man, you can't see that. And more than likely, you're not really that successful because... Anyone that says that they're predicating their life on this free information and coming off this whole thing, because one of the things is uh, I saw this YouTube video of this guy who was getting into Amazon FBA. And what he did was watch all of the Amazon FBA people. And he's like, you know, I wasn't going to spend any money. I wasn't going to spend any money. And this reluctance to spend money is fear. It's fear. Because if you're going to go around and watch all these YouTube videos and try to put together the pieces, if you could have took one good course and literally been five or six years ahead, time is money. And this is one of the things. This is why I'm in this YouTube mastermind group. This is why I've learned, you know, some of the stuff that I'm doing is starting to turn this channel around. Uh, I'm launching, you know, I got... My channel eligible for monetization in six weeks, the fastest I ever done. And there, there was a comment about my failed YouTube channels. Look at the thumbnail. This is what winners do. Winners try something. Don't work out. They do something else. But what do feminine men and losers do? They sit on the sidelines and go, oh, you failed. You failed. You failed. While they're absolutely doing nothing with their lives. Going back to that statement, which resonates to me, with me so well, those who hate on you are usually doing less than you are. And that's what I say to my feminine men haters. Like, seriously, I'm not going to go back and forth with you because I'm busy. I'm building something. I'm working on something. I don't have time all day to go back and forth with you and your feminine man ways in a, a YouTube comment conversation. Because I already know what you guys going to do. Because you ain't got no time. You ain't got nothing but time. All you're doing is sitting around doing nothing. Doing nothing. And hating on someone who's making waves in the world.
because you jealous. And I will speak what I, I will say what I want about me, Kevin. Kevin is a feminine man. Kevin built his YouTube channel off of Hayden on Grant. These are facts. Because he couldn't do it any other way. These are facts. And I will say what I want about Gary. I know more about resale than Gary V. But because Gary V has a bigger platform, he puts out trash talk. He gets a whole bunch of people. I know way more about resale than Gary V. I lived it. I breathed it. I did it seven days a week for many years. But once again, you got these feminine men, these fanboys. It, 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 it's just, it, it's crazy. Let's see. Well, let's look at. Oh. Let me go back and do that. All right. We should have sound now. If you, uh, this, this live stream was brought to you by Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. So one of the things that I want you guys to understand is, and we're going to be talking about it in this situation, is the ability to fail and try again. This is a trait of many winners. So we've got a lot of courses, a lot of things to help you here at HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com. Currently working on the Making Money course, the Setup and Foundation, the Critical Mindset course. Got this stuff going on right now. So there we go. So one of the things that we need to work on is there, there are many people who don't want to really try. They don't want to put forth the effort. They don't want, they don't want to look bad. And I'm going to tell you some stories of me looking bad. And also for you haters, stop lying in the comments. I mean, that that's just really distasteful when you lie and you make stuff up. Because one of the things, uh, one of the traits that we're going to talk about is winners consistently know how to get back up off the mat. They have a level of resiliency that helps them get back up and try again. And they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. And this is something that losers don't have and fanboys and people who watch other people put in work. You know, it's kind of like um, people who watch sports versus participating in sports. It's a crazy, crazy thing. Pretty much, Robert Burns. Pretty much. Malik Vandenberg, some of me, Kevin's info is cool. He just crumbs across bitchy, hating on Grant Cardone, make him look weak. Pretty much. All right, Kevin. Haven't heard Gary V laying on anyone off that isn't common man money. You know, let's let's look at that because um, Gary V is all up in the social media. So oh. 
Oh, actually, Gary V did lay people off. VaynerMedia lays off 5% of its global staff as part of restructuring. This was written April 3rd. So Gary, Gary V's late, but Gary did, but to Grant's credit, Grant came out and did a video and said he laid people off. I've not heard Gary do that. Gary laid, Gary laid, see this, this should let you know. This should let you know how deep this thing is. Yes, Gary V's company has laid people off. And if this thing gets deeper, they're going to lay more people off. Good call for putting that in there because I didn't even look this up. But Gary V, let's see. Nope, he doesn't talk about it. He doesn't talk about it. It's very interesting. See, a little research goes a long way. Pretty much James Sam Towns. <laughs> That's funny. Thomas Downers, winners focus on winning, losers focus on winners. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Camila Williams, that's interesting. All right, Terry. All right, Joshua Wash. Pretty much. Solid steps to wealth. Thanks for the $50 super chat. Uh, you're in the Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills program. So I'm going to restructure that some more tomorrow. Yep, Steve Jameson. Show up lifestyle. Gary V has cut down on the amount of content he puts out. Honestly, I really didn't know because I don't really follow Gary that much. The expat home, I love Gary, but he's a little tone deaf during this time. A lot of fluffy messages. Aha, I've not listened to him. Josh, from the way you're talking a bit, because I've been a fanboy of you too long and not applying. Yeah, because at some point, you, you got to make some moves. Because here's the thing with winners. Here's the situation with winners. People who are winning fail. Now, I've been really honest. I talked about, you know, you on this channel, I talked about my first five businesses. They failed. But I kept going and I kept going and I kept going. And one of the things that's going to happen, because as you go through this process of learning, because if you try something that doesn't work out, that means you learned what you need to learn from that lesson. But what, what happens with many, many people is they will sit on the sidelines and watch you put in work. And then talk smack about you while they're absolutely doing nothing, absolutely nothing with their lives. Because this is why I believe hard work is valuable. And this is where I agree with Gary Vee. You need to work your face off because this is what happened. Being in the storage auction business, running all those Craigslist ads prepared me to be successful on YouTube and the Internet. Because I knew I had to come in and had to work. This is one of the biggest problems you have with so many people who try to make money online. They don't realize they have to work. They figure that they're going to find some little system, some little hack, something where they don't have to put in the work. And that's the issue. You got to put in the work to win the game. 
because like I, I've been unvarnished. You know, I've started a lot of YouTube channels that didn't work out or I just lost interest in them. And, you know, the little fanboy and Greg Murray, how many YouTube channels have y'all started? Zero. Because you're scared. Because you don't have enough talent to keep anything going. Only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. I mean, right now, this whole thing is going to expose a lot of people. Many people will be exposed. Uh, many people, because like I said, Gary V, Grant Cardone came out and did a live stream talking about the layoffs. Gary V did not do that. Gary V did not do that. I want you to think about this. Because Gary V has so much clout that people don't investigate him. And, you know, like I said, these are some uncertain times. You're going to see a lot of companies laying people off because they're not making any money. And a big part of being successful in life, you know, is knowing what you want. Pretty much. Kevin Davis, you had to put in a lot of work in order to make things happen, especially if you have no system and never done that business before. Pretty much. And that's one of the big issues with, and this is why, you know, I've structured Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills the way that I did, because I understand that there are many people in there who are just not going to be doing like, all right, talk about the making money course, how to make money from scratch. Like, let's, let's go through this real quick. Knowing what you want is key. I cannot understate how important that is. And so many people are so flaky and so ambivalent and have no clue what they want. It is the genesis of everything. And I, I keep saying this and people keep like, well, I want to keep my options open. You don't want to make a commitment to a concept or an ideal. And that's going to cost you. You know, having the courage to want what you want, letting go of the social shit, becoming a massive agent of action, learning to love the process. This is endemic of being successful because one of the things I want you guys to understand. When I came to YouTube, I knew that I had to put in work because this was part of my DNA. It's like, all right, to do Craigslist. I put some stuff on Craigslist, I was selling some stuff, but until I fine tuned it, until I got to a certain position, a certain level, sales didn't really go, I mean, sales started to explode, but I had to work at it. I had to really work at it. Pretty much Robert Burns. Show up lifestyle. How do you find a niche for your channels? Most people say follow your passion and some people say following your passion is a bunch of crap. What's your opinion? Let's say your passion is scrapbooking and you do a YouTube channel about scrapbooking. Um, more than likely ain't going to do that well. There are certain niches that do better than others and following your passion I, I i'm with mark cuban on this follow your determination follow what you're determined to win like i'm gonna give you an example like someone cuts you off in traffic and you get pissed off and you start honking the horn and you zoom up behind them is that passion or determination Follow your determination. I, I'm not a member of the follow your passion crowd because here's one of the things that has happened in our society. We have large segments of people who have no hobbies, no passion, no direction. And you say, follow your passion. They're like, what, what am I going to do? They, they have no clue to nothing.
All right, Terry. Terry Braithway, you know, he hates that people bring that up, but it's a fact. It's a, it's a, it's a fact of his journey in life that his daddy owned a business. And here, here's something else, too, that no one really brings up. That when you're the offspring of a successful entrepreneur, that preps you to be a successful entrepreneur. You know, he, he, he can go ahead and rant and wail and say all this other stuff. But the fact is, he had a head start. He had a head start. You know, he tries to downplay it and say the business wasn't making that much money. But his father was able to give him a job. It's able to get like here, you come work in the family business. Here's some money. You do this, you do that. I mean, you know, you know, that's one of my issues with him is like he, he that that's such a huge help. You know, he did not start from the ground. He didn't start from the gutter. He didn't start with absolutely nothing. He entered here. He didn't come in down here. He went in through the second floor door. And Terry, it's going to take you a few weeks to do all of those steps because, I mean, the preparation of your YouTube channel and the thought and consideration that goes into it makes a huge difference. Hollywood Prep, eBay is popping like crazy if you got the stuff that people want to buy. eBay popping like crazy right now. So let's talk about success and lessons learned about success. One of the things that I have consistently learned, and this is how I can see what Gary V is doing. This is how I can observe uh, me, Kevin, because I've been around some heavy hitters. Most of the successful business people are not on social media. They're not on YouTube. They don't have an Instagram. And the few who do, they really don't get a lot of views because they put out factual information. And to be on social media, you got to kind of do a meet Kevin thing. Like you kind of have to go after somebody because people love when the little person goes after the big person. They, they love that. Like, hey, that's great. That's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Keep doing it. I like seeing this. I don't like that Grant Cardone. I don't like Uncle G, him and his jet, him and his pretty wife, him and his nice family, him and his G-Wagon, him and his rose. He's too flashy for me. Take him down, Kevin. Take him down. You know, that, that level of hate because, you know, in the video where I was talking about the haves and have-nots, that gulf's about to get, like, it was a gap. It's about to become a, an ocean. The gap between those who have and don't have is about to become an ocean. You're already seeing it. I mean, Kevin, that, that, that's just a fact. And he hates when people bring that up. But I don't think Gary would be where he was if he wasn't the son of Sasha Vaynerchuk. And, you know, it's, 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 he hates the, the, when people bring that up. But it's just facts. Pretty much, Steve Jamerson. Pretty much. JB Weld, it's not where you start, Hustler. It's where you're going and where you end up. Well, Gary V had a head start. It's, it's critical and it's important because he didn't start from the bricks. His father was able to say, here, Gary, here's the job. How many of you had that kind of advantage? Malik, he, he hates when people bring that up. Elena's gorgeous. They can die mad. Oh, yeah. They go, they hate, they hate Grant. They hate Grant. Pretty much. Oh, there's always been a gap, but it's about to get really wide. Because here's this thing. All right. Right now, I mean, all the folks are at home and people are 
watching or on Facebook, they're watching cat videos, they're working out, they're Netflixing. And one of the biggest things, and this is another trait of winners versus losers. Winners are self-directed. Winners would be like, you know what? I got laid off, but I'm going to go home. Every day I'm going to get up, I'm going to put my clothes on, brush my teeth. I'm going to put in some work. This is what winners are doing. And a lot of people who are not winners, because what you're going to see during this recession is you're going to see that people, there's going to be a fundamental difference between the real operators and like, you know, like, uh, thanks for bringing it up because Gary V's business has been impacted. Gary V laid off 5% of his staff and Gary V does social media. So that, that tells me something. Someone said that uh, Facebook ads and YouTube ads have gotten really cheap really quickly, which means that people have pulled back. You're going to see every business impacted by this, but what you're going to see is the winners, because one of the things that's so hard to do is to stay focused and committed when everything is going wrong. And that experience with eBay, I mean, I woke up, I mean, my world just crashed. But once again, I knew that I had obligations. I had to stay busy. I had to stay focused. I had to go out and get it. And this prompted the whole Craigslist thing. Because that Craigslist, Craigslist saved us. Honestly, when we lost that eBay income, it was Craigslist that saved us. And me going ahead and posting ads on Craigslist. I mean, I was posting Indian everything. I was posting in the antique section. I was posting washer and dryers. I was posting coffee tables. I was posting anything in that warehouse that we could sell and get some money. It was going on Craigslist. Winners do not give in when it gets hard. And right now it's, it's going to get harder because right now, you know, the stock market's going up. You know, we got two days of gains and this is just so weird to me that right now we got people losing their jobs. The number of people who are losing their jobs this month should is probably going to be higher than the people who lost their jobs last month. Yet the stock market is still going up, which means the stock market is in the reflection of the broad economy at large because that should be sending it down. But once again, you have hope, you know, what I call Bitcoin hope. Regardless of what really happens with Bitcoin, there are some people who keep hope alive, keep hope alive, keep hope alive. All right, Terry. Tony, Gary says, if you ever work for someone, you can't call yourself an entrepreneur. I don't, I don't remember him ever saying that. Scott, now they're saying checks will take 20 weeks to come. For some people, um, we should start seeing people getting money next week. I agree. I started in a shitty old house with a leaking roof and no TV as a kid. I just got to support six. Yeah, Gary is vastly, wildly successful. But part of his story is his father started a business and gave him a job. And this is one of the things he hates being reminded of. He doesn't want to talk about it. It's a difference, just like every financial person saying stop buying Starbucks to save your little chain versus G-Man saying making more money and stash it. Pretty much, Terrell, Terrell Braveway, pretty much like Trump. Donald, Fred Trump was the man I, on this channel. I got a video. Fred Trump was the man. Fred Trump was a financial genius. Fred Trump set up his son. We're talking to the tune of $460 million bailing little Donald out of trouble. Pretty much, Kevin. All right, Klein, skill up, skill up. 
Extraordinary money, that's going to be a long climb. Yeah, the stock market is booming. And it's going to crash again. Once the real marketplace fundamentals enter these balance sheets, it's going to crash again. And that's why I made the video that the stock market isn't the real economy. Because how many people, I mean, seriously, um, Darte Coates, the stock market's booming. You made $350 in three hours today. All right, from a, a monthly perspective, how much money does the stock market make you per month and how much money does st the stock market put in your pocket? Because what you're going to see if, because uh, it seems that the, the curve is flattening and that people aren't getting sick, which I hope continues. But if it doesn't, you're going to see a lot of these people who are seriously leveraged they're going to run into some amazing, massive problems because due to the stimulus bill and the, the, anyone that needs relief can just call up their mortgage lender and get instant relief. There are people who are not in trouble, but they calling up anyway. They calling up anyway. Oh, you do day trading. That, that, that's not the stock market at large. That's a whole different thing. I, I think day traders right now are rubbing their hands together because the market is so volatile. That's The market is ripe for day trading. You didn't say you were day trading. That's totally different. Dark, 20 days a month, average 250 a day, 4, 4K a month for my couch. So Steve Jameson, maybe because honestly, I thought about starting the day trade because the market is so volatile because I would put 25,000 in the account where I can trade as often as I want. You, you eating. <laughs> All right, Thomas. Day trading, I mean, this is like the perfect environment for day traders because the market is swinging, doing these wild swings, and that's how they make their money. They make their money off the differential. If they can get a stock in the morning for like, you know, 350 then it goes up to 450 they sell it. If they bought 1,000 shares, they made $1,000 just like that. Because I've been studying day trading, I've been studying Forex, because these are things I'm going to talk about on my channel, and I may do some day trading. Uh, I signed up for Webull, I got the Webull account, I got the free stocks, I'm going to do a video about that. But yeah, for day trading, this is like the perfect storm for day trading right now. All right, Terry. Show up lifestyle. If you were broke right now and got laid off from your job, what would be your first hustle? My first hustle would be resale. I would be on eBay and Amazon like a mug. Exactly. 25K in and out of stocks all day. Pretty much. Forex is booming also. Yep, I use Webull. Robert George, he was talking about day trading. He's the day trader. Pipping to pay the bills. Uh, Ali Abasi, do what you want to do. Yeah, because I'm looking at the Webull platform. Because um, I got to set up my... Because did you know iPhones have screen recordings on them. I learned that last night. But. So I got to go ahead and learn how the, this works. But. 
but yeah, uh, that's my Wee Bull account. Uh, I think I'm gonna have fun with this because I'm I may put because I'm gonna put a little money in the market because I've seen YouTubers in the personal finance sector do reviews on stuff they don't use, so I'm gonna actually use it, put some money on it, buy some stocks, walk people through it. Matt Axelrod, look up Yusuf Scott. He's no joke in the good deal. Because right now, you know, Forex traders and day traders really don't care about the long-term aspects of a stock. They just care about velocity and vol volatility. Right now, if you're a day trader, because at one point I almost started uh, day trading Bitcoin. But the thing is, this is when trans tra transactions times were garbage. So you could like, if you could get the, the Bitcoin in the morning and then sell it in the evening, there was a thousand to $1,500 spread. And this went on for months, but then it stopped. Demetrius Hilton, what are evergreen principles? Evergreen principles are things that don't change. And this is one of the reasons that I teach them. Like you're gonna start a business, you're going to need a service or a product and you're going to need a customer and you're going to need a way to market. That's never going to change. You know how we do it may change, but the fact that you got to do that to get your business rolling, that's never going to change. It's never, never, ever going to change. It's not. And this is one of the situations that people don't understand about business because like I've been watching a lot of the Shopify, they're all doing challenges because people, because this is another thing about being successful in life. You've got to stick with something long enough to see it through the end. And you have a lot of people who will get into something and they will hop out the minute that it gets a little dicey and they don't stick with it. Like when I was doing my Craigslist ads in the beginning, it was kind of, it kind of sucked. But I stuck with it. I kept pushing. I kept pushing. I kept pushing. And this is the difference between winners and losers. And like we we have a whole collection of feminine, weak men who have no accomplishments, have no money, aren't doing anything. And they're just out here hoping that some gorgeous woman is just going to give them their best goodies just simply because they showed up and they're feminine, unaccomplished men. And this is, I think this thing is going to bring the masculine man back with a, a, a vengeance because, you know, socially we've been, the beta cuck has been pushed up. Like when they did this video, like I'm not that masculine type of man because you start entering into, because masculine men just don't get along with homosexuals and trans. It just seems weird. Just don't. And this, these, these population groups or begging for acceptance, and it's just it's just ain't gonna work. Max Axelrod, how much money you making? That's the that's the question. Thomas Dammer, hack for L. So one of the things is that you, you have to stick with it because this is one of the things that I've learned when I was doing the Craigslist ads and I stuck with it, I had found success. When I started here on YouTube, I did not like making YouTube videos, but I stuck with it. And this is one of the differences. This is the trait of successful people who have the ability to stick with things, even when things get harsh. And they just, and also it's time. It's having time because when you have the ability to stick with something and you have the ability to stay on course, regardless if all types of chaos is happening, regardless if all types of crazy stuff is happening, this is one of the things that's going to keep you in the game. Sipping ain't easy.
Thomas Downer, okay. Power play. I'm a mechanic and I'm 30 years old with my own mobile business. Ain't a lot out out there for me. Well, actually, yeah, because I've seen that all of the mechanic places have been wide open. You could turn a wrench. You should, there should be some out there for you. JB Well Disney calls that they needed an emasculated man, a masculine man to get their agenda across. Get your kids off the Disney crap. Well, movies have been pushing that because at that one point there was whenever they brought the show on that had gay characters, you would see more homosexual sexual scenes than you would see heterosexual sexual scenes. It was pretty wild. Fair, I started two weeks ago and I'm making about six hundred a week on the thousand dollars account. Granted I'm a newbie, but taking the info seriously. Also, I haven't traded every day. Max, why aren't you trading every day? Or you are you you run into an account size limit? Because the way I understood it, if you have smaller accounts, you can't trade every day. You would have to have the twenty five thousand dollar limit. Hollywood prep, man. Yo, yeah, it's all time low. All right, Demetrius. All right, Allie. Thanks for the five dollar super chat. Oh, I'm saying not a lot of um, men mechanics my age. Most are desk jockeys, pretty much. Yeah, they want to make a man to be Homer, but. The, the principles of success is sticking with something and going out and doing hard things. When I was a kid, we used to have these track and field days and they would hand out a first place ribbon, a second place ribbon, a third place ribbon, and a fourth place ribbon. And you would compete. And you, you would, you know, I got a few ribbons and never got a first place ribbon, but I got second, third, and fourth in some events. And you just learn that, okay, like I got to try a little harder. I got to run a little faster because this, this recession is going to make strong, silent masculinity back in vogue. It's going to bring back so many things because right now you have a bunch of these feminine, weak men who can just leave comments on YouTube. They can't make any money. They can't start a business. They can't kill dragons. And they're just going to be seen for to be the useless eunuchs that they are. Steve James, if you trade more than three times per week, they shut your account down if you don't have the $25,000. All right. That, that was kind of my understanding. I know show up lifestyle is everywhere. All right. Auto shops are essential businesses in Florida still open. Disney's losing close to 40 million a day. Oh yeah. This is going to reflect in their stock price. It, it has to because Disney gets 60% of its revenue from its theme parks. And then another large slice of its revenue from movie productions, which are all shut down right now. Bill Shark, I never said Forex, trazy, Forex trading was easy. I don't think day trading is easy. Pattern day traders rule. So, because like I said, I'm thinking about opening up a day trading account because right now uh, it's so volatile and it, it, it's kind of crazy right now. Because there's money to be made because the stock market is going to be like this for a while. It's going to be up and down, up and down. But 
if you are a strong masculine man with a plan your economics together you're going to shine in these times you're going to be so in demand and all of these weak feminine little boys who can just or who are desk jockeys it's it's about to be really hard for them Joshua Hill, he was trying to make some money. Liquor sales during these times. Disney owns ESPN pretty much. All right, the breaks TV. Uh, I'm probably going to do day trading. I like the day trading because I've been studying that. I'm not probably not going to do Forex. Blacksmith, you're in the service of skill trade. This is going to be good for you. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for those who are willing to apply themselves and fail. Because I love it when one of these little feminine men come at me like, oh, you failed, you failed. Tell me something I don't know. I've talked about failing. I fail more than I win. That's why I win so much, because I fail more than the average person. I take more chances. I make more mistakes. You ain't, you, you, once again, that, that's the sure sign of a feminine little weak man who will not take a chance, will not be committed, doesn't know what he wants. Jesse, that was years ago. Like with Webull, you can open up a margin account or you can open up a cash account. And I think you can go up to 4X on margin. And then if you're going to do options, they're going to make you do an additional application. Pretty much. Because the thing is, in life, you're going to take some L's. And this is one of these traits of these little feminine men. They feel that they're going to do something and be instantly successful. Pretty much, Terry Henry, because right now, you know, as these things even out, because I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with jobs this month, because essentially there are many analysts who are predicting that if this goes on three months, this is going to bankrupt the mortgage industry. This is going to break the American economy. And I want you to think about this. The American company, the American economy can be broken by just three months of, of a pause. Just three months. We're not talking years here, just literally three months. How good was that American economy? I was watching an episode of Boom, Bear, Bust, and he was like, if the economy was so strong, people would have had savings. They would have had money. They wouldn't need to beg the government for money. And, you know, we've we've done the numbers. The average, you, we got a lot of people making less than $30,000 a year. It's kind of hard to save up money when you're making $30,000 a year. Charles Harrison, any advice on using truck and LLC and getting into the M1 finance? Well, first of all, if you got a truck and LLC, you should have your truck on the road running hard as you can and get your cash up. Red X trade a trade price action divergence on Forex follow Momo Forex Nick Shank Rennet Trader and 93 Forex on Instagram use Ana or Hugo as brokers. I mean e commerce, if you can get yourself a neat good e commerce program, you're gonna make money. Kevin, that's what I'm thinking. That's that's going to be greater than the Great Recession. Bull Shark, even if you blow up your first account, learn the game, you have the cash to reload and try it again. Most people can't afford to do that. Well, I'm going to look at it because um, I've been seeing some strength. You know, we will see because once again, I, I need to stay in my lane. 
But if there is an opportunity where I can learn a new skill, I may go ahead and do that. You can't shame folks to take the kids to save money to eat better. You can't shame them to save for a rainy day. I ain't shaming nobody. I'm just stating facts. I'm just saying two years I've been telling folks to get ready. There ain't no shame. Just facts. Because I'm getting a lot of new people who are coming to the channel and they're like, hey, you know, uh, I don't want to hear about all this doom and gloom. I just want some solutions. And I'm like, eh, bruh, it's a little late. It's a little late. The burglar is in your bedroom with a knife to your wife's throat. It's a little late to get the gun. It's a little late to get the shotgun. It's a little late. Antonio Valentine, what would be a good service business? Food delivery. Any kind of delivery service. Picking up and delivering stuff. Folks don't want to go out. There's, there's all kinds of service businesses. Joshua Hill, that is a good point because this is something that I, I talk about in tomorrow's video that's going to be dropping on Savage Finance. Oh, Darte Coates, I lost 3K when I started day trading. Be safe. Well, once again, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look at it. Jesse, it's funny that. No, that's what this guy said earlier, just saying. Folks said I was shame, shaming yesterday. Well, you are a grown man and woman, and you know how the playbook goes. And if you didn't get ready and you in the world are hurt, you got to look in the mirror. Charlotte Thomas, you shouldn't be trading live if you hadn't gotten down your strategy. And more important, risk management. Start and demo, then go live once you're consistently profitable. We got all these day traders up in here. All these traders. Johnny Walker, janitor of business. Anyone that's doing disinfecting, they still good. Charles Harrison, it's on B School for Hustlers. Hacks for L. Because once again, you know, I'm just looking at this. Because if I get into it, I'm going to get in with 25,000 and I'm just going to go slowly. Because, like, I got to learn how to use this Webull app. Because, you know, there's a learning curve because I got to play around with it and I got to put a little money on it and see how it works before I do a review on it. My husband makes Japanese food. He's been slammed sushi trays for weeks. It breaks TV. Thank you. So, you know, like I said, I I'm going to be training, producing, and learning new stuff. Like I'm reading a copyright book right now. Because, you know, like I said, I practice what I preach. And I will try something, and if it don't work out, I have no problem with that. For all these little feminine men like, oh, you threw the YouTube channel. It didn't work out. But this YouTube channel worked out. Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills worked out. B-School for Hustlers worked out. And all of you folks who lying, like I researched you and you have failed LLCs. Really? That's that's news to me. I don't really know. I, I don't have any failed LLCs. And also, this is somehow I know y'all lying because I have some LLCs that my partner started in her name that you can't even research because you don't know her name. I'm like, why are you making up these lies? I understand you don't like me. I get that. I totally get that. I'm better than you. I make more money than you. I'm more successful than you. I told if I was you, I hate me too. I understand. But the line, that's got to stop. It's got to stop. Mm 
Uh, relic trader risk management is key. Show up for lifestyle. Cool. Read the copywriting books. For Forex. Because I don't think I'm going to mess around with Forex. Oh, this, this is some interesting stuff, Jesse Saunders. But one of the things I, I want you guys to understand is that success is a journey. It's not a little light switch that you flick on and off. And you got to be committed and you got to stick with it. Because if you're committed and you stick with it and you'll see yourself on the other side, this is one of the things that you are going to bear witness to and be happy you did because like I had many trials and tribulations with YouTube in the beginning. I mean, these, these dudes were hating, they were coming after me and I just put my head down. And it's like, you know what? I'm not going to fight with them in public. I'm going to get their channels deleted. I'm going to sue the ones I can find. And I'm going to tell you something. When, when I sent those people, these lawsuits, Oh man, they had a four hour hangout about me one night. Oh, he's suing people. And I noticed the next week, the, the, the trash and stuff was greatly reduced. Because Alex Becker did a video talking about Grant was wrong to sue, sue Kevin. And I started to come in on the videos like, well, I sued some people and that got them off me. Everybody, because see, me, Kevin, is he, he's a little bitch. And he's a little attention-seeking bitch. And he's going to use any and everything to get attention. And... You know, that's just how some people are. But he's used Grant's name to build his channel. And it's a successful tactic that many people have done. Vegan Gains did it. Uh, Drama Alert did it. And if you want to be that kind of person and have that kind of energy in your life, you know. Richard Trader. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do Forex. I'm going to do day trading. I'm going to stick to one new skill at a time. Charletta, you can trade whatever you want as long as you master your strategy and read price action. Yeah, I know Forex is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's kind of crazy. Pretty much the expert homes. Pretty much. Coughazilla is another one. Meet Kevin has that weasel punk ass energy. Hey. You, you see this, you, you, you see this, but you know, success is a journey. It, it's not something quick and everything that I've been successful at, I've had to work on it and I've had to deploy it. Then I figured out what didn't work. Then I deployed it again. Like take my first book. I had to put that out three times cause I got screwed on the editing. And you know, the whole time people were talking stuff that's got bad editing it kept selling, it kept selling, it kept selling, it kept selling because I kept marketing and I kept pushing it. All right, Jeremy Hamilton. Because during this, this time, there are people who are going to come out of it quite wealthy because they've done the hard work and they've positioned themselves to take advantage of opportunity. Like I'm going to say, I'm going to go on record. The stock market's going to crash again. Right now, it's a good week. Everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But look at the condition of the people. We're going to probably, by the end of the month, we're going to have 20, 25 million people with no jobs. 20, 25 million people with no jobs. And also, one of the things that they don't count into the lost jobs, of those 10 million people who lost their jobs, how many businesses went out of business? 500,000? 
How many businesses went out of businesses? Because they're not counting that, and that's something else I'm looking at. Forex is only open five days a week. I know. It was, I thought it was open seven days a week. Pretty much, Stefan. Haters come with success. Pretty much. Pretty much. Because, you know, it, I have to say that it ain't as bad as it once was with the feminine men and the haters. I remember it was a daily event. Like, every now and then, I'll get one of these clowns. And it's only like a handful. So, it, it, it is nothing like what it, man, it used to be. I would have people who would create duplicate YouTube channels to start fights with the people who liked my content. That's how bad it was at one point. Kevin Kramer said the market isn't translating the main street. He's not sold on what's going on right now. Hey, it's, it's ridiculous. It's pure emotion. King Nick. <laughs> Your Sears has been in trouble for a minute. And, you know, like I said this morning with the, the these loans, like I, I many of you are going to have your heart broken because you're depending on money that ain't going to come. It's been confirmed by the SBA that if you have no employees, you ain't getting that 10K. And if you don't have proper documentation, like I've went through the SBA loan process. They want everything. If you got a cat, they want to know the cat's name. They want to know your firstborn. They want to know your unborn children's potential names so they can use them as collateral. It, it ain't going to be as easy as all these people have been saying because, you know, I, one of the reasons I did today's stream the way that I did it is I'm trying to get away from the stimulus talk because so many people are desperate for this money. So many people are rubbing their hands together and it ain't just going to come because, you know, I, I heard someone say that, you know, they were going to get the full 10 million. And I'm like, do you have a payroll of 10 million? That's what the payroll protection plans for. That, that you, you don't have a payroll of 10 million. You ain't getting 10 million. Charlie Ellis, Tom Fork starts Sunday evening with the Asian season open ends Friday after New York closes, by the way. Yeah, because I'm going to do day trading. I'm not really, I, I'm, I'm probably going to dip my toe in Forex to look at it, to talk about it. But, you know, the day trading from what I've seen is just, for me, it's more consistent. And once you get your situation down, you don't have to, I mean, you, like, there, there's this girl on YouTube, she's called Humble Trader. She gets up at four o'clock in the morning to get her setups and stuff like this. Her channel has literally blown up. She did a video, the life of a day trader, and she does pole dancing, and she put that in her thumbnail, and I figured that's why her channel blew up. Jesse Sanders, that's a good question. Terry, there's going to be a lot of folks not to replace people like you. So, you know, we're, we're going to get into some stuff because um, for, for my folks here who are doing the day trading, how much money are you folks making? Share in the comments how much money you guys who are doing the day trading in the Forex make per month consistently. Because we already had one person there. He does like 4K a month. He said, we eating. We eating. And in a little while, I don't know how long it takes YouTube to review stuff now. Uh, but... 
I actually achieved my goal of getting um, Savage Finance eligible for monetization. So this is when I'm going to start coming out with my heavy hitter videos, my popular videos. I'm going to start. That's on the uh, the track. I, I really don't know what's going on with Japan. Life for business around 5K. That's pretty good money for part-time work. Is there any big boy traders who are trading with a million? Because from from my research, it seems everyone has, you know, 25,000. It seems like a really large account. And most people are trading with like 5,000. <laughs> Robert A. Burns. That's a Charlie L. Thompson. I average 200 to 300 a day. My account is still small, building the up though. All right. 200 to 300 bucks a day. That's like $9,000 a month. That's pretty good money. Pumping numbers did 7K a month ago. Lower now, but made more money with Forex. God, there's no, you saw Humble. Well, see, you got to understand, Humble Trader, her videos are being pushed. YouTube's algorithm is pushing her videos because you're gonna because you ever wake up and go to your YouTube page and see all these 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 things is like I, where, where where all this stuff because one of the things I'm seeing is a bunch of brand new channels pop up on my homepage. I mean, two hundred three hundred dollars a day is consistent money. That's really good. I'm trying to get to 10K a week, though. Hey, uh, there is this guy. His name is Cameron. He's he's a redhead with a, a ponytail. Um, he does really well. Ross Cameron. On well, life for business, my goal is to average twenty k, then quit my job. Okay, so we're going to be getting into a whole bunch of different stuff because um, one of the things that I'm not going to do is start doing these challenge videos like uh, Biazza did. Like I day traded for a week and he talked about it, and you know that that's just for views. And uh, I'm going to do some stuff to create some real information for people. So we're going to get into some funny, fun stuff. Yeah, because see, once again, once you understand how the YouTube algorithms, because I, I, I'm still thinking about the YouTube channel that I'm going to do. And the first video is going to be talk like smashing the like button, LOL. Because you, you see a whole bunch of people like smash the like button. It helps my channel. It, no, it don't. It doesn't do anything for your channel. And if you would look at the number of likes compared to views, you would see that, that, that there's no correlation whatsoever. None whatsoever. All right. That's what I got for you guys. For you folks who want to get into the Hustlers Kung Fu plan, I, I'm going to work on some stuff tomorrow and I'm going to send out some emails. So with that, I'll see you guys later.